Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, look, we, we, we know the numbers, right? We know the numbers. Uh, the Dow, the S&P, uh, the NASDAQ, 12%, right? 12% declines all across the board. You have ridiculous amounts of uncertainty right now. 80, 80 something thousand, 83,000 uh, cases of uh, corona, nearly 3,000 deaths. Uh, you, have, um, you have announcements coming out that maybe precautionary issues of maybe closing down schools is on the table. You have all this wall, wall of worries, right? Tremendous. And the stock market obviously never likes uncertainty, okay, especially when it becomes a life and death situation. And this was, the, you know, the biggest decline we saw since uh, 2007, 2008, right? October of 2007, 2008. Um, it was a little bit different that time, okay? Um, at that time, the the stability, okay, of the global financial uh, network was at risk. And everything that we knew um, in our lives could have collapsed and could have very easily collapsed. Uh, but the government, right, the government stepped in, the bailouts, whether you agree with the bailouts or don't agree with the bailouts, the bottom line is if they didn't bail out, right, these major banks and Wall Street, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I, I bet you, I bet your pinky toe that your life would be a, a hundred percent different, okay, uh, than it is now. But thanks to the government, okay, whether you believe it or agree with it or not, thanks to the government, we are still here and the economy overall is thriving. Fast forward, right? Fast forward 13 years later, we are met with another, okay, uh, another, you know, very, very aggressive situation. And it's a fluid situation because it's new, it's brand new. So there's a lot of emotion attached, but just keep in mind, just like uh, SARS and, you know, just even the common, the flu, right? The flu kills ridiculous amounts of people every single year. This is a health scare. This is something that could spread like a domino effect. And again, as we see it, at least on the infancy stages, is affecting the world, right? People, especially in Asia and China, uh, they're, you know, they're, they're having people stay at home. Uh, things, you know, you see companies closing down their stores there. Like for example, Starbucks uh, closed down hundreds of locations there. I believe the headline, I think it was Thursday or Friday, they're starting to uh, slowly starting to open the map up. But again, it's affecting business. And until there is some sort of definitive way to kind of combat what we're seeing, this new thing, this new mutation that we're seeing, there is going to be uncertainty. Um, the, the, the good news is, okay, the good news is just like every, every type of new virus, whatever the case may be, there is going to be some sort of trials, um, some expediting in trying to get this fixed. And the hopes is, or the hopes are, my English teacher is going to kill me, uh, but the hopes are that once the weather starts getting a little bit warmer, okay, um, it's going to kind of flatline, right, or start to decrease. And the hopes is, if the hopes are, if this makes a play going into next year, at least from the warmer temperatures now till the next time around this comes about, you know, next uh, next winter, there's going to be some sort of either cure or some sort of uh, remedy that's going to make you kind of you know like anything else. So that's the good news from the from the trading point of view. That's where we come in. Okay, so a lot of you guys, okay, a lot of you guys that started you know new in this market over the last two years, all you've seen is is a rapid linear market. Okay, ridiculous, off the charts, right? Um, and that is really, really cool. That is incredibly cool. Matter of fact, we actually saw not a similar market, but a very, very uh, aggressive market from the 2009 bottom. Now, why was 2009 bottom important? Well, again, from 2007 to 2009, 
there was the mortgage crisis. On our futures uncertain. Okay, we don't. Even, we couldn't. You know, we wouldn't even know if we were going to keep our homes or even get a library card because again, the credit markets just stopped. Everything halted, and again, things were really, really bad. Now, why this is different compared to to that? Number one, this market right now is tradable. Okay, if you've never seen a very, very aggressive materialistic market before. So for example, if you've never traded in 2007 through 2009, this is scary for you, okay? This is very, very scary. But as everything in time with experience in the market, you'll get used to it, okay? We never saw, okay? We never saw, when I say we, we never saw, for example, we never saw a terroristic type of market from 2001 to 2003, right? With every single day, you couldn't get long because you were afraid another terrorist attack come. You couldn't get short because you, you, you figured they were, they were gonna find the terrorists and the market's gonna run 2,000 points. You couldn't do anything. I couldn't make money for two years, okay? I was the absolute worst trader on the planet from 2001 to 2003. I did not make a dime, okay? Because I've never seen a market like that, okay? My only, you know, my only exposure to the market was this big booming dot-com bubble, right? That was my only exposure to the market. So when I ran into a market that you couldn't, at least I couldn't trade because I didn't have, I didn't have a track record with this type of scenario, it was scary. I couldn't make any money, okay? It was depressing. My, the whole thing is I had all the doubts in the world. Again, my favorite part of the day was going to sleep at night, okay? Very, very depressing. And fast forward, right? Fast forward, you got to 2007, right? This was four, five, six years later, and you had another crisis on your hand. And again, although it was very, very hard, and 2007 was not a great year. I did okay in 2007, but it was scary because we've never seen potential collapses of banks, okay, you know, banks and brokers and insurance company and reinsurance companies, everything in between, because again, we've never saw that. But because of my warped subconscious experience in 2001 to 2003, at least kind of getting some sort of, some sort of familiarity, what could happen next, you know, gave me that little bit of experience, okay, even though it's horrible for me, even gave me that little bit of experience that I made it through 2007 and started doing pretty well again through 2008 all the way to 2009. That was kind of the generational quote unquote bottom. So now the fact that we are here again and I have, you know, two really decisive, like make it or break it times in the markets for a lot of investors, a lot of traders. This to me was when it first started, it was something more of like, okay, I get what's going on. I kind of went through it a couple of times before. I know what to do. More important, I kind of know what not to do. And the fact that, me personally, the fact that I trade only channels at any market, yeah, of course you always have to be careful, but at least my risk is always defined because again, I'm trading within these channels. The, the channels are either gonna go through the upside or the channels are gonna go through the downside. And there's always something sneaky in between. So going into this round of quote unquote, catastrophe, right? The, the, the catastrophe market that again, a lot of new traders never went through. It's very, very scary to those who have never seen anything but up. Again, is it the easiest market to trade? Absolutely not. You have to be very, very patient. You can't deviate from your process. I, again, I, I can't tell you how many, how many people I've seen on social media, for example, deviate from what they do. So if you're a mid cap trader, trade mid caps. So what are you doing? You know, what are you doing trading, you know, spies? If you've, if you've never traded the ETFs and you trade $2 stocks, well, why the hell are you trading the Qs? You, you know, your people are deviating from what they do. And then all of a sudden put it, putting themselves in a position that they are making really aggressive choices when they don't need to. Okay. They're putting themselves in exposure when they don't have to. And what this market has really taught me are two things. Number one, I'm very comfortable with my own skin. Uh, it's going to be 21 years for me in May. Okay. It's going to be, I believe it's May. It's going to be 21 years for me in May. That's a lot of screen time. Okay. There's a lot of clicking buttons. There's a lot of ways that I've improved year after year after year. And once you get comfortable in your own skin, then you don't need to go outside of your comfort zone. You don't need to start making hard choices because again, you know, you know the longer ramifications of kind of sticking to what you want to do. And the last thing you want to do as a new trader, again, you're a new trader. You're trading less than two, three, four years. You're a brand new trader. Again, somebody goes to medical school for a couple of years is not a doctor, okay? You're still learning 
medicine. You're still learning all the moving parts of what it is to be called a doctor. The title of doctor and the title of trader are, you know, are completely different things and actually being a professional trader and actually being a full-blown uh, doctor. So it's very, very important to understand that. But if you're a brand new trader right now, again, I can see why this is really incredible difficulty to you. And you're probably depressed. You're probably putting your money on the line where you don't need to. You're probably making those extra aggressive choices when you know you shouldn't, but yet you're still doing. Because again, for some reason, subconsciously, you still believe that you need to trade every day. You need to trade every cycle. And I, I, I want to tell you that life is not fair. Okay, that's the first thing. I, I think everybody understands that. Okay, life is not fair. Trading is not fair. Okay, but trading is a lot more unfair to those who have never seen scenarios that they're in front of them the first and second, third time around. That's a very, very important point. And God has a plan. Okay, whether you believe in God or don't, don't believe in God, I do. Okay, and you know, life is so hard that there are so many ways to completely give up. Completely give up in life. Okay, just phone it in. Again, 2001 and 2003. I wouldn't personally wish the pain that I felt to any trader out there, okay? Again, I, 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 I couldn't figure out why I couldn't make money anymore from the internet craze. And the internet craze was gone, okay? It was gone. Again, I had suicidal tendencies. I was completely depressed. And again, after a while, my wife just gave me an ultimatum. And look, it's been two years now. You haven't made any money. You either figure this stuff out or you get a job. You get a job. And the, the one thing that I, I, I recognize looking back at it now, okay, the idea that I was feeling sorry for myself and this is not fair. How can I do so well during the internet craze, but now I can't make any money. Why is my marriage collapsing? Why is every single day an uphill struggle? I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Okay. I want it to all go away. And you know, God will test you. Okay. God will put you in a situation that you are going to be put in a situation that you have to make tough choices. And the one thing, I, it was very, very clear to me early on in life, and especially early on as a trader within my first five years, is nobody cares. Okay, guys, understand that. And, this, and I'm not saying it in a mean way. Uh, it's everybody goes through life. Okay, as, as I joke around all the time, life is only hard the first hundred years, right? It becomes easier after that. So nobody in, a, in, a, in an odd way, everybody's going through the same thing. So you could be an experienced trader for 20 years. You could be, you'd be a novice trader for 20 weeks. We're all looking at the same market. The difference between a trader for 20 years and a trader for two years is the trader for 20 has already gone through this. It's under their belt. It's experience. They know what not to do. And the most important part is they're comfortable in their own skin to click that mouse when they feel comfortable, not because the market's open, when you feel comfortable. And this is a type of market that, you know, that it, it shows, it tests your character. It tests your resilience, okay? It tests your thick skin. And the traders that are going to survive, they have to find a better way. They always have to pull themselves up uh, from the bootstraps and continue going forward. Again, this is not a business for everybody. It's not meant to be for anybody. It's not meant to be uh, you know, an entitlement to get rich. A lot of traders just make a living. That's what they do. No matter how many years you've been doing it, a lot of traders just make a living. Okay, Some do incredibly well. Some people make a living and some people don't do it at all, but it's okay. Not everybody needs to be a professional trader. Not everybody needs to do this full time. It's all about being comfortable in your own skin and trading when you see value, okay? Not because of the market's open, because you see value. And because of all the fear mongering you see, um, you know, potential, uh, potential pandemic and this and that, you know, people start looking subconsciously outside of the market. Well, how is this gonna affect my family? How is this gonna affect my livelihood? Okay, if I have a business that nobody leaves their house, how am I gonna pay for my mortgage? How am I gonna buy food? How are my kids going to you know, go to school? How am I going to be able to pay for school? All that stuff. So the wall starts slowly closing in. But, but again, you have to be strong. You have to look at the big picture and you have to understand that this is just part of life. Whether you're trading for a living or you're not, you're going to be thrown curveballs, wrenches, hand grenades, missiles all at you. 
the key to life, and again, you're gonna, you're gonna see this as you get older and older, I'm 46 years old, I have a completely different mentality than it was when I was 25, okay? Things are always going to be challenging. Your job is to be resilient, okay? Your job is to make sure you are doing everything possible to keep pushing forward, okay? Because it's so easy to give up. And I've always said this, and I've always said this for years, this is the easiest business to get into, okay? The easiest business to quit the hardest business to get back into once again you quit. So it, it's very, very important. And again, if you are new, again, I've been saying this throughout the whole week. You know, if all you guys have been watching these videos for the whole week, there's been phenomenal value this week, okay? And the most ironic part of this week was the, the phenomenal value was actually to the upside, unless you were short overnight. And again, I'm, I'm, I go home flat now uh, every single day, uh, depending how the futures open up. Uh, again, you see me tweeting this, you know, market gaps down 400 points. I say, hey, look, the value is to the upside. And why is there value to the upside? If you're only trading six channels, think about this. My way of trading, I only trade six candles a day. There's nothing more. There's not, there's not every single second. There's six candles a day. And within those candles, I know when there's a pivot coming on Roku to the upside. I know when there's a pivot coming on Netflix to the upside. I know when there's a pivot coming to the NVIDIA to the, up, to the, to the upside. And the reason why I keep on saying upside, if I'm, if I'm not short overnight, I know a lot of you guys did, did really, really well, and this, that, the other thing. But if I'm coming in flat every single day, and I know the market's just not gonna go straight down. There's a lot of value intraday cycles. All I need to know is, for example, where is the value, right? Where's my 60 minute channel, okay? Where's my 60 minute channel to the upside, okay? And as soon as you see these futures pop, right? Because again, futures pop and they give you a tremendous value when they pop. When they pop, these things, when they confirm channels, they go up in dollars, okay? They go up in dollars. They don't go up 30 cents and crash. They go up in dollars. And the one thing that we've been seeing the whole week, okay, the whole week, yes, 12% all across the board, that's horrible. But what we have been seeing the whole week are pockets of strength throughout the day that these stocks want to go, right? We've seen back-to-back -back days now that the market's gone down 1,000, and then they rallied it back, you know, four, five, 600 points. And if you look at the beta names the last couple of days, okay, they've been very, very strong. Again, if you're trading... God knows what you're trading. If you're trading something else, I, again, I can't speak to that part because I, I don't trade them. This is, this is my whole world, right? These 10 stocks are my whole world. So it's very, very specific what I'm watching. And what I like what I saw this week, and kind of I, I want to I kind of start backwards here. So here's the good news, right? Here's the good news and here's the bad news, okay? I want to show you guys the good news, the bad news, because again, we, we're always speaking from a point of playing devil's advocate, Okay. The good news is, the good news is, okay, the last two days, like I said a couple minutes ago, we're seeing some really good pockets of strength intraday. Okay, you saw this on Friday. We'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. NVIDIA, Roku, Netflix, uh, Shop Monster, Shop Monster, NVIDIA, uh, Netflix, uh, uh, Apple, Faith, all these stocks are starting to wake up. And what we saw for two days in a row, rallies towards the end of the day, right? Thursday, we saw, kind of sold off that rally, but you saw that on Friday. That's the good news. They want to go so bad. And no matter what type of market I've traded, whether it's been um, the downside, right? The downside of the dot-com bubble, the mortgage mess, as, as, as aggressive the mortgage mess was and the financial crisis was, we did see days after huge sell-offs that the market was going up 500,000 points. These are facts. So no matter how bad a market is, no matter how bad uh, the macro environment is, you're always going to have these massive, massive rallies intraday. These are facts, guys. Go back to any single market and, and see. These are facts. Anybody who's been trading for at least 10, 15, 20 years will tell you that. So the idea that the market will go straight down, it, it's, 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 it's not true. Okay, it's not true. Look. The good news is we're going to get massive rallies in between. The bad news is, and again, this is, again, I, I don't speak through rose-colored glasses. We are only in the middle of this range, right? This is a weekly chart of the Qs, and we got down right to the middle of this range. What that basically means is, well, we can still go down another, well, from 200 points, another 40, 40 points or so on the Qs. That's the bad news. The good news is, again, we are in control of our trading. We know where, we, where the value is every single day. For example, if the market gaps up, right, on most days, not, not this week, and I'll tell you my specific plan going into this week, but on most days when you have a bad market, okay, on most days, when the market gaps up 
100, 200 points, it's usually sold and the supply rolls over and goes red again. But when you have a market like we have saw this week and every single, for four days in a row, you saw the Dow go down 1,000 points, the value starts going back on the long side. Okay, And based on what we talked about a few minutes ago, no matter how crappy a market is, no matter how aggressive the market is, and whatever the tangible materialist facts are, you are going to see a thousand point rally. Okay, it's, it's inevitable. So I think going into this week, any weakness, okay, if you short any weakness after the open, you are putting yourself, you're putting your head on a swivel. Because again, when you have 4,000 points of downside, right, 4,000 points of downside in one week, and every single time we try to get off the bat with very, very aggressive action, um, especially in the ETFs, that is a sign that eventually, okay, once we have that washout again and they start rallying again, they will not stop, at least for that one day. So yeah, the bad news is, look, we could still go down another 40 points on the queues, but there's a very, very high probability, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever the case it may be, we gave back 4,000 points, right? 4,000 points in the Dow. As, as we talked about all the time, gravity is real, okay? Well, snapback rallies are very real as well. And if I had to bet my pinky toe, okay, and I don't have to, if I had to bet my pinky toe, I do believe this week, okay, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we will have a 1,000-point rally. I, I, it's, it's just my opinion. I think we will have a 1,000-point rally just because, again, whatever goes up must go down. Whatever goes down has to go up, especially if you have comments coming in from the Fed, for example, talking about the United States, uh, whether the government will issue some sort of stimulus, whatever the case may be, whether, whether they go over the top and actually ban short selling again. I don't think that is the answer. I really hope that's not the answer because again, the last thing you want to do is have a linear market one way because it really, it, it really, it really puts an artificial flow in the market. We kind of don't want that. That's exactly what they did uh, during the mortgage crisis. You couldn't sell stock. You couldn't short sell stocks. You had to buy deep way out of the money puts. Uh, on everything. You couldn't short the spots. Just to give you an example for all you guys who didn't uh, trade during that time, they banned shorts on. Okay. Uh, so we don't want that. I don't think any trader wants that from, from a, a point of a structured market because it makes everything artificial. The spreads get very, very wide. The liquidity gets not where you want to be and, 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 and makes things in a weird way a lot harder. Believe me, if they ban shorts on, it doesn't mean the market's going to go straight up. Trust me. Trust me when I say that. Um, so I think going into this week, right, I think going into this week, you have to be very, very careful of getting caught on that massive short squeeze. And what we saw on Friday, for example, a lot of people turned around and said, well, this whole market is driven by algos. That's right. It's absolutely driven on algos. How do you think these pivots, when, when Roku confirms a number, how do you think Roku spikes up a dollar, dollar and a half in a couple of minutes? What do you think? This is mom and pop buying 30 shares of stock. These are algorithms, right? These are algorithms that are taking advantage of supply and demand. So, for example, when people turn around and said, oh, my God, I can't. Who, who could have possibly seen that rally on Friday in the last 20 minutes? Look at the daily chart on the queues, right? Look at the daily chart on the queues. Look what they hit, right? Look what they hit. Now, again, when you get a six, seven point rally right back, is that crazy? It's absolutely crazy. But where do you think these algorithms are going to hit? They're not going to hit random areas. They're going to hit a major support, major resistance. So the people who are turning around say, well, algorithms are controlling the market. Absolutely they are. They're taking advantage of technical levels that if 90% of the traders don't know these levels are there, then whose fault is that, right? The person who made a better bread box or the uneducated trader saying, oh my God, I just got, I got caught at the bottom of the range. If you sold stock at 198 in the queues, you got caught on the 200 day moving average, okay? So it's very, very important important to, to really embrace technical analysis. This is not something that you, you know, you're saying, oh, I just missed the breakout. No, no, this is, this is, this is your livelihood. This is the, the difference between you trading and you trading properly. And, and, and the ideal fact of the market is everything's in a perfect world. Everybody, break, everybody breaks out. Everybody makes a lot of money. But the market is designed. The only, the only job for the market is to, to separate you from your money. So if you, if you started shorting stocks towards the end of the day, and you're shorting stock in the 198, 199 level on the queues. What, what, what do you think is going to happen? The 200-day moving average is the most aggressive. It's the mother of all supports in the market. No matter what the technical, no matter what the macro news is, that area will at least be defended the first time around. So, based on what we saw in this candle, and based how I've seen really aggressive markets, I have to believe we get a thousand point rally. Okay. Uh, whether that happens or not, it, you know, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. I, there's no, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Who cares, you know, who cares if I'm wrong? I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, there's no style points here. If I'm wrong, well, I'll take the other side of the trade. But I think the safest bet 
uh, is to trade these channels. If you're a new trader, you know, and your specific process is not being highlighted, get out the way. I mean, again, we've been talking about this through the whole week. What is so bad by sitting it out and virtually engulfing information that you can use four, five, six, 12 years later? There's nothing wrong with that. You're storing this information in your subconscious in your mental Rolodex. So not every market is for everybody, okay? You know, I know a lot of people who do it very, very well. I know a lot of people who've gotten destroyed. It's just, it's the, it's the end game, right? For every trade, for every buyer, there's a seller and somebody's gonna lose there, okay? Somebody's gonna lose. So if you've never seen this before, okay, the last thing you wanna do is put yourself in a situation that you're uncomfortable, that your emotions are really, really amplified because that's what the market is telling you uh, that you should be doing something that you have no business in doing. And the last thing you want to do is experiment in a sandbox that you've never played. So if you're a $2 trader, right, if you trade small cap stocks, well, what the hell are you doing trading the spies, right? If you've never trade beta, well, why are you trading Tesla this week? Okay. If you trade, if you trade options, well, why the hell are you stopping to trade options right now? And all of a sudden you're trading $2 stocks. Again, don't, don't do something don't prostitute your money. The market will always be there. Your mental sanity, okay, and your mental sanity goes away. If you're trading poorly, if you're trading outside of your comfort zone, your money goes away. You don't get that back, okay? You don't get that back. So it's very, very important to understand what you are up against. Be an adult about it and say, look, this market's not for me. I'm trading two years. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's too aggressive. I'm not experienced enough to deal with the emotions. I'm not experienced enough to deal with the swings. My account is not built for this type of volatility. Let me be an adult. Let me stay out of the way until calmer waters and you know emotions start coming back down. And then slowly but surely, I can pursue my career. Uh, because again, it will be aggressive this week. Okay, a lot of emotion levels will be risen. The key is again to understand your lane, understand your experience, be an adult about it, and just take care of yourself mentally. Again, the last thing you wanna be is a rich trader, okay, that lost their sanity, okay? It's just, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's just, it doesn't make sense. It's, life, is all, life is all about living a quality life, not something that you're constantly stressed over, losing sleep, uh, but the most important thing, kind of going into this week, guys, again, I, I say this a lot, be a better friend to yourself, okay? Just chill out, relax. It's not that serious. Any trader who's been trading for a long time will tell you that. Everybody's been through the same things. And the most important thing is chin up, resilience, okay? Your, your, your confidence will be tested. Uh, your character will be tested. And the most important thing is, again, stay strong, guys. Stay strong because, again, we're all part of the same team. So uh, Friday, again, very, very uh, aggressive. I mean, this whole week was aggressive. Um, I, I, I really liked I really liked what I saw this week. I, I really did. I, I thought, unless you came in short every week, uh, every, every day, there were periods of the market, like we discussed earlier, that, that gave really big value, like really, really big value. And, you know, these beta names have just been in a weird way, they've been, they've been actually so much stronger than the actual market. You saw two, three days in a row, Netflix was green. You saw two, three days in a row, uh, for example, that Roku was just very, very strong. And Shop, uh, Tesla had been a really bad week, you know, really bad week point-wise. But there was instances in Tesla this week that you could have done very, very well to the upside, right? So I, I, I like what, that we were in complete control of the trading this week. We, we waited for these channels. And the most magical part about channels where they confirm when you get an oversold interval, for example, when the market goes down from down 1,000 to 800, and for example, one of these stocks confirmed the upsurge channel, the move is not going to be 30 cents. The move is going to be two, three dollars. And that's exactly kind of what we saw uh, over and over and over again. So let's talk about it. Right? Let's talk about Friday's session. Uh, again, guys, uh, we only have uh, today's what? Saturday. So you have till Monday. Okay. You have till Monday. Uh, to take advantage, to take advantage of uh, the private feed until we uh, raise rates uh, Monday. Monday, I think we raise rates. So I think March the second. Today's the 29th. So we have a couple of days left. So if you want to be part of the feed, guys, if you want to lock in, you know, lock in the price. 
Um, you know, this is the time. You have two couple of days un until the price kind of rises. So, uh, yeah, so we, we talked about this, right? Fr happy Friday, same game plan as yesterday. Fr Thursday was very, very aggressive. Uh, let's wait for these ranges to confirm. Make sure to take every pivot, right? Just take cash flow on every pivot. Again, you don't know how big the move is going to be. A dollar, two dollars, fifty cents. Take money on the way up. Use break even as you stop on all runners. That was the game plan. Okay, there was nothing. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to recreate the Mona Lisa. So here it is. You know, if the market gets better, Roku, right? If the market gets better, 110 level is big on supply, needs to reclaim, right? To, to get a great push from yesterday. So here's Roku, right? So here was Roku. Uh, here was Roku right here. Here's a 60 minute channel, right? Here's a 60 minute channel. This whole area here, look at look at the whole area here, guys. 109.98, right? 10 right 10 uh 109.97 so once it you know once it got above right once it got above that 110 level the first move was like a dollar 80 right right into the next supplies and then later obviously when the market started rallying so you had a nice little push on roku a dollar 70 dollar 80 uh bimmy never got up to the six dollar level space space put in a triple triple bottom never uh, never built below that 19 so if you could sell i really like I liked, obviously never got there. I liked that setup, right? And I liked it to the, shadow, to the downside. Here's, here's what I was talking about, the 19 level. You have 19, 11, 19, 11 low here. You had 1931 low here. You had 1921 low here. So you had all this information. This is what we talk about ranges that are building, you know, building distribution. So if this thing would have taken out 19, this thing would have went lower, but it never did. So um, you know, good job for the bulls for holding that, that level. Again, stay patient. Key is ranges to develop and to confirm. You don't need to rush, right? You don't need to rush. Really strong week. This is the last day of the month. Let's see what happens. Uh, CORV, I wasn't even watching this thing. I put this for you small cap lovers. I think it went to like 70 cents. Not a big move here. CORV. Uh, I usually don't put these things in the channel, but, you know, beggars couldn't be choosers. So, yeah, 65 uh, it went to 70 cents. Again, I don't know if that's good or not, but that's what it did. Uh, Tesla, you know, for all you guys that took Tesla, three, uh, 635 held three times. If it builds below, can flush. Experienced traders only, right? Experienced traders only. I thought it could get to 610. It got to 611. Here was Tesla, right? Here was the Tesla. Here's the 60 minute channel on Tesla. And right here, you see this whole area here, right? 635, right? 635, 635. It broke to 635, went all the way down to 611. Uh, that was the rising support. So if you did take that trade, good job there. Uh, Netflix, again, 374. If it reclaims, can wake up. Here was Netflix. Uh, here was Netflix. Here's the 374. Let me just try to find it. There's so much crap going on here. 374. Yeah, so here was the 374, right? 374, 374, 374, and it went perfectly right to the 377 area. Matter of fact, if you look at, if you look at, right, 77 supply, right? 77 supply and make sales, it got, it got right to there. So again, you have to know where stocks are gonna potentially go. You need to know where stocks can potentially stop. It's all part of the distribution plan and knowing where uh, your areas of interest are. So very good move. Uh, Roku, again, take sales along the way. Again, this is just, you know, we're not trying to, to go nuts here. Here was the biggest move of the day or the second biggest move of the day. Uh, Net Nvidia, 253, huge level. I traded Nvidia. I, I got a little less than three points on this thing on that first push in like seconds. I mean, it was just it was just because this market is so aggressive. Any push of the future is going to take this thing up. So 253, huge level needs to build, especially if the market starts bouncing. Uh, here was Nvidia, right? Here was Nvidia. Here was that first push. So right, you guys all see this, right? 253, 253, 253, 253, 253, right? So 253 just exploded. I mean, absolutely exploded. Went to 260. Uh, went to 260. Big, big push. Really big push. And again, nobody plans on that you're going to have this monster rally and this thing's going to be up 20 points. We're just trying to win our interval. So that first push was, that first push was six. I caught about three. Um... Because again, who the hell thinks they're gonna, you know, it's gonna give a 10 point move? Who the hell's gonna think it's gonna go up 20? So again, I was just happy winning the interval there. Um, sweet spike, right? Sweet spike take off again. And I kept on saying this throughout the morning keep taking all these spikes. And there's, there's, again, there's no way, there's no way you can go broke taking these spikes, okay? The, the key is right now take the pivot, take the cash flow, use break even as you stop. That's what you're trying to do, okay? And if you get a bigger move, four, five, six, 12 points, it's a whole big different story. But again, your job is not to predict the closing price. Your job is to, to win the interval. 
Um, and again, I kept, on, I kept on riding here. I go, look, there's enough value to scalp to the upside channels when the futures turn. I mean, look, like I said, look, look at Netflix, look at Roku, look at the video. And again, I go, same formula. Then my next trade was Square. Um, you know, Square actually needs that 8170, uh, not 8150. There was actually, I, I wrote this a few times. Let me show you why. Because uh, the Bollinger, yeah, I remember the Bollinger band kept on rising. I go, now it needs to confirm 8180, 82, right? And then I wrote the third time around, I go, okay, now the bully's way over, so 8150 needs to build. So it was, I know there's a little bit confusing, but I think everybody took this trade at the same level anyway. Uh, that 8150, 82 level needs to build. And it went, you know, it went again. Nice spike there. Again, doesn't make a difference. You could have gotten long anywhere between 8150 and 82. You got that spike, you know, you got that spike, and here was the 82, right? Here was the whole, here was the whole issue why it was so, you know, it was so weird. So here was the whole 8186 and 8150. So I kind of said between 8150 and 82, and it spiked and it kept on spiking. So nice move there. I actually went to 84 and change. I screwed up. I sold, I, I sold half up like 40, 45 cents, only because the future started tanking again. And then I got stopped out break even on the balance, and then they woke up again. So it was a little bit tricky, but again, the whole point is you're just trying to get as much as you can before you're getting stopped out. Again, every headline, you will be kind of uh, a victim of it. But again, cash flow is cash flow is cash flow. Um, again, keep scalping those channels, guys. Just keep at, this was a monster move, okay? And the reason why this was a monster move, it went straight up. There wasn't even a downtick. There wasn't a downtick between 444, 444 to like 460. There wasn't a downtick. So here was shop uh, 444, and this is when they had a major spike in the middle of the day, right? So look at the channel up here, right? 443.91. So look at this move here. And I said this thing has a shot to 460. This is one candle, 444, and put in a high here of 459.33. Beautiful move, and then the stock obviously kept on going towards the end of the day. So shop was definitely the biggest move linear uh, throughout the day. Monster, blah blah blah. Um, and then, yeah, I mean that was the day. That was the day. And then I logged off, and then I looked at uh, and I looked at uh, at the close, and the Dow went from down a thousand to down, you know, to down like three hundred. So, so I, I kept on saying, you know, guys, just keep on watching these. And this is what's important. This is a very important understanding. I could feed you pivots. From from here to next from here to next Sunday, okay, till till you blue in the face. If you're not, if you don't understand, okay, if you don't understand the moving parts of why these things are are triggering, confirming at certain levels, you're only cheating your uh, you're only cheating your development. And by the way, if if you if you uh, if you are on the private feed, you get these, you get these as included. You get you know, you're getting nearly ten hours. Of breaking down this theory okay so there's absolutely no reason to sit at home and feel sorry for yourself this that the other thing where it's right in front of you it's all technical analysis so you're getting all you're getting the workshops as part of the Twitter feed so if you're not putting in the work and don't understand why these moving parts are so important why these quickly you know crazy lines that I have on my charts are so important you're only cheating your development guys and it's it's all it's not about you know it's not about you know um, cheating the process you're cheating yourself so if this weekend guys please I'm, nobody's telling you to watch 10 hours but at least watch the 2.0 start watching the 3.0 it's only going to be beneficial uh to your development so uh going into this week i'm 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 long biased until we get that one i'm long biased the only reason why okay again I'm not saying i'm not going to be shorting stock i'm not going to be saying the market can't go down again we we just illustrated why the cues are only within 50 percent of the channel so i do think the market can and you know can and will go lower okay but i do believe there will be a rally at some point in the next i think in my opinion the first couple of days of this week and the last thing I want to do is get caught for a thousand point rally. Um, so I, I, if you look at every single pivot that I have for uh, for this week, okay. If you look at every single pivot that I have for Monday, they're all to the long side, okay. Every single one of the pivots to the long side. Let me give you guys uh, some names that I am watching. They're all going to be beta, okay. It's just the reality. They're all going to be beta. Um, I like TTD, okay. I like TTD. If it starts clearing out this. Uh, 292 area. I think this thing's going to go. I think there'll be a sneak gear pivot uh, in the process. Um, I think Tesla, if it wakes up, wakes up and confirms this channel, I mean, you got, 
you got 30 to 50 points to the upside. So I'm, I'm watching Tesla. Again, whether it's going to confirm or not, different story. But at least my bias initially is to the long side because, again, I just don't want to get caught in any rally, uh, any, you know, any, any weak sell-off. Uh, Roku, I think if it confirms the five-day, I think this thing's going to wake up. Look at the last two days. These are green candles, which basically says they're higher closes then opens this this is bullish okay so if there's a rally you want to be in stocks that are doing this this is very strong uh shop again monster on friday this thing confirms the five day it has room to 485 uh, so i want to keep an eye on that as well uh netflix again like i've been saying for a couple of days this is a pure play on people quote unquote staying home for this coronavirus it's been a monster the stock has been very strong if it confirms the 10-day moving average this thing's going to go higher as well um, again, Square has been a monster. Good earnings this week. Uh, it's been a monster. And Amazon. I think Amazon wakes up as well. I mean, again, if people don't want to leave the damn house, how are they going to do their, you know, how are they going to do their shopping? How are they going to do everything, right? Here comes Amazon. You know, they're, they're built to this, right? They're built. So they start reclaiming, you know, they start reclaiming the 200-day moving average. You know, you have room, you have 50, 70 cents of, 50, 70 points of upside. So my initial bias is I'm expecting a rally. I don't know if that rally is going to come on Monday, on Tuesday, or Wednesday, or whether it's going to come at all. Okay, our our ability to change our minds is good. Okay, we don't want. I'm not painting myself in the corner. If I start seeing any rally attempts fade, well, I'll start looking back at downward channels. So it's very, very important to have an open mind, have an opinion. Right, I have an opinion. This is my opinion. We'll see what's going to happen. Uh, again, guys, if you're not, if you're experiencing this for the first time. Just, just, just trust me. Every single trader prior to you has gone through this. It's okay not to trade, okay? If you don't feel comfortable, if the emotional levels are too aggressive for you, just please be a better friend to yourself. But again, if you want a longer-term career, okay, you have to have thick skin. You got to believe in God. He will help you. He's testing you right now. And again, it's your ability to stay afloat and stay solvent. Guys, God bless. I love you all. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the field on Monday. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.